this lecture we are going to study about rotation of objects about lines which are parallel to the coordinate axis so let me write we are going to do rotation about lines which are parallel to coordinate axis so let me draw one figure here so we are going to take a line in a three dimension space which is uh, which is not arbitrary but it should be parallel to one of the coordinate axis so if i call this x axis y axis and z axis suppose i take a line which is parallel to the y axis so how are we going to rotate one particular object by some angle theta about this line l so let us see how to do this so this is the line l that is given to us and i will assume that the coordinates of m are x naught y naught and z naught and the angle by which i want to rotate the object is suppose it is this angle this angle is theta this is the original object and this is the image of that object after the rotation so if you observe that the point x naught y naught z naught one when i am going to multiply by a translation matrix which is given by one 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 on the diagonal and here i'm going to use a factor as zero minus y naught minus z naught and one then the output that i will get will be x naught then y minus y naught will be zero z minus z naught will also be zero and i will get a one year so this means that this translation matrix which i'm going to call as e1 will take the point x naught y naught z naught to the point x zero zero so when i show it in the picture i'm going to project it on the xy plane then this coordinate on the x axis which is parallel to the y axis so let me draw it like this so this point is x naught this year you have y naught and when you take this you will have your z naught so this point corresponds to x naught zero zero so this means that this translation matrix has done what it has taken the point x naught y naught z naught to the point x zero x naught zero zero okay now what we will do is we wanted to rotate the object about the line l instead of rotating it about the line l we will rotate it now about the line l1 which is actually the x axis so that angle of rotation is theta so now i will apply the next matrix to that which is t2 which is rotation by theta about the x axis and we know that the matrix of rotation about the x axis is 1 cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta and the 0 0 1 in the last column then after i do this rotation so the object is rotated by theta about the x axis then i will retranslate it so i will use the translation matrix t3 which is actually t1 inverse the inverse of the first matrix what is the inverse of the first matrix it is given by 1 1 1 on the diagonal and here i will have y naught with a plus sign and with a plus sign i will have a z naught so the total concatenation will be t is equal to first translation then i will use a rotation matrix uh, by angle theta about x axis and then t3 which is t1 inverse so this mat map t or this matrix t will do my rotation of objects about the line which is parallel to coordinate x axis similarly if i want an object to rotate about y axis i'm going to use the same i'm going to use a translation matrix which is similar to like that then I'm going to use a rotation matrix about an angle theta about y axis and then I'm going to use T3 which will be a translation matrix so let me write this translation matrix this translation matrix is given by 1 1 on the diagonal I will have 1 1 1 and the translation for will be minus x naught 
and minus z naught this will be t1 this is the rotation matrix r theta y which you know what it is and what will be t3 t3 will be retranslation which will be again 1 1 1 and here i will have x naught 0 z naught and 1 so this is the way you will have rotation about the line which is parallel to the y axis similarly you can now write the rotation of an object about the line which is parallel to z axis now we will construct a matrix t which will rotate a line uh, rotate an object about uh, the line which is passing through the point 2 3 1 and it is parallel to x axis so how will we do this so i hope the picture is clear to us now the line should be parallel to the coordinate x axis this is the line l and that line l is passing through the point 2 3 1 this is y axis and this is z axis so as as discussed before the first translation matrix that i'm going to use is 1 1 1 on the diagonal and here i'm going to use 0 then the minus y and minus z so this is x naught this is y naught and this is z naught so this will be minus 3 and minus 1 this is the first matrix i'm going to rotate it about an angle theta so let us take theta is suppose 60 degrees so the second matrix that i'm going to use will be r theta x which is nothing but rotation about 60 degrees about by about x axis will be given by 1 cos 60 sin 60 minus sin 60 and a cos 60 with a 0 0 0 1 on the last column and the third matrix that i'm going to use t3 will be retranslation which will be given by 1 1 1 on the diagonals and here i will have 0 with a plus y naught and a plus z naught so this will be my my total matrix t which is t1 t2 t3 will be doing what what job is done by this matrix it will rotate a given object about the line which is passing through the point 2 3 1 and which is parallel to the x axis now we are going to perform rotation about an arbitrary line in three dimensional space now we know that an arbitrary line in three dimensional space is given by x minus x naught y minus y naught z minus z naught upon cx cy and cz means this line passes through the point x naught y naught z naught and it is parallel to the vector cx cy and cz the cx cy cz they are called direction cosines right and what do we know the relation between direction cosines that cx square plus cy square plus cz square is always equal to one so now what we will do is we will go in the three-dimensional space and we will take a point which is having coordinates cx cy and cz this means that cx square plus cy square plus cz square that quantity will come up to be how much that quantity will come up to be one so the length of this vector is equal to one so these are the three axes and now we will take a point p in this uh, space that point is has having coordinates cx cy cz now i will uh, draw that vector op which you can see here now what we will do is we will drop the projections of this these uh, this point on the three axis so i'm showing you point a which is on the xy plane b is a point on the yz plane and c is the point on the xz plane these are the three planes that i'm showing you so abc are lying on these coordinate planes i will draw those line segments so that it will be more clear so pa pb pc are perpendiculars on the three coordinate planes now what we will do is 
we will try to put some angles also here i will draw all the necessary line segments also whatever i need so when i join that ae then i'm joining the point a with d also which is on the exit plane i have also joined the segment be all these line segments we are going to need in the derivation so then when i join all these points i'm going to now insert the angle alpha also so i have for the for my convenience i have also constructed what, what is segment oa and this ob you can see i have joined so that ob is going to help us to draw the angle alpha so when i look here i see this picture now let me insert some quantities uh, and terms here the coordinates of point p if you remember were cx cy and cz so corresponding all those lengths also will be inserted in the figure now so let me see this carefully so this will be your cz as you can see i'm inserting in the figure then cy is on the y coordinate on the y axis so this is cx cy and cz so let me see where this d is now d is what by pythagoras d will be cz square plus cy square and its square root and now we will need the last person that we will need will be the angle alpha which will be an angle here so this angle is alpha now this alpha angle is going to help us to find other quantity so let me take this p away and now we are going to derive a relation between alpha cy cz and d you can see in this triangle ofd you can write in the triangle ofd as what is your sin alpha sin alpha is opposite which is cy upon hypotenuse is d and uh, what is uh, cos alpha cos alpha is adjacent but this adjacent is actually cz because this is cz so it is actually cz upon d and uh, what is d equal to we know by pythagoras theorem in this triangle in this triangle that i'm shading here that d will be equal to how much square root of cy square plus cz square so this is the value of uh, d in from the given figure and this angle is your angle alpha so we have rotated that line uh, first about what about the uh, about the x axis so we are rotating it about x axis by an angle alpha now once the line is rotated by angle alpha about the x axis now it is a time to rotate the line which you can see that line segment i'm going to rotate that line segment about this angle uh, beta so let me bring the x axis right through my eyes so the terminologies are let me remove this beta for the time being aside so you remember that this distance d was actually this distance and now where what is the length of oi so that length is also d so this oi distance is also d let me rotate the figure again back to the original position let me place the d's on the right place so this distance is d and this oi is also d let me put the values uh, other missing values in the figure so ae is cx as we know and this angle beta i am going to insert in the figure and now we are going to rotate that length segment oi by angle beta and so that the line will be coincident with the z axis now we are going to go in this triangle and find some relations so now we are going to work in this triangle o g i in this right angle triangle where beta is that angle and g uh, g works to be a right angle here and this uh, this distance as we know 
so we are going to calculate that this is the unit vector as it is so the length of that unit vector I'm, uh, which was initially op has just now moved over here so that length or the length of that vector is again one so if you if i look in this triangle carefully now i understand that what is sine beta what is the value of sine beta it is opposite is uh, cx and hypotenuse is the length of the vector one so sine beta works as cx and if i try to look at cos beta then cos beta is adjacent so the adjacent side of that triangle is og divided by the hypotenuse is one but if you observe the length of og the length of this is o and this is g so the length of og is the same as di so what is the length di the length of di is d so it is d upon one so i got two important relations from this figure is that sine beta works as cx and cos beta value is nothing but d so what is d equal to where what where what was d initially we know that this d was square root of what it was square root of cy square plus cz square as seen in the initial derivation of alpha so this is cy square plus cz square so then we will use the rotation matrix by about the y axis by angle minus beta i'm going to take because we know with respect to y axis there is a change in the sign always so i'm going to write cos beta uh, sin beta minus sin beta and a cos beta so that change i have made with respect to the rotation matrix of y axis and i have a zero everywhere else and the zero zero and last is zero 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 one so this is the rotation about y axis by an angle minus beta then we are going to rotate the line by angle theta about the z axis since because of the all this thing the line or the original line is now coincident with the z axis and now i'm going to rotate the object about the z axis by using this rotation matrix and what is that rotation matrix that rotation matrix is cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta 0 0 1 and 0 0 1 and then i'm going to re re-rotate it by angle beta about the y-axis so which is now given by what which is given by cos beta minus sine beta sine beta with the cos beta and 0 0 1 so this is the way we are going to get the object rotated about the y-axis by an angle beta and once we are done with this then we will again re-rotate the mat the object by angle minus alpha so that will be rotation about the x-axis by an angle minus alpha and that matrix is given by 1 cos alpha minus sine alpha because we are rotating it by the value minus alpha sine alpha cos alpha and a one here and at the end of the thing we will then retranslate the entire object by the translation matrix minus x minus x naught minus x naught y naught and z naught so let me write it here so this is the translation matrix which will give which will take a line back to the point x naught y naught z naught so to summarize what we have done we were given a line which was arbitrary and which was passing through the point x naught y naught z naught and it was parallel to the vector cx cy cz 
which we have called point P. So we first translated this line, which is passing through the origin, that translated matrix, which, uh, which we have used the translation to bring that line to pass through origin was minus X naught, minus Y naught and minus Z naught with the one on the diagonal. After that, we performed a rotation of the line about X axis by angle alpha. After doing that, we performed the rotation of the line about Y axis by angle minus beta. Then we performed the rotation of the object by angle theta, which we desired to rotate the object by angle theta. After the object is rotated about angle theta, then we re-rotated it about Y axis by angle plus beta. Now, after that, we have, re we have to re-rotate it about the X axis by angle minus alpha. And again, you have to re-translate it. So re-translate it is the above matrix with the last row as X naught, Y naught, Z naught, so that the line is again retranslated back to its original position. So the entire transformation T will be in this sequence. First the translation matrix T written, then Rx alpha rotation about X axis, then rotation about Y axis by minus beta, then rotation by angle theta, which is R theta about the Z axis. This rotation was about Z axis because this line we have made coincident with the Z axis. Then rotation about Y axis by angle plus beta and then multiplied by rotation about X, X, about X axis by angle minus alpha and then the retranslated matrix with plus X naught plus Y naught plus Z naught. So all this we have seen in this particular derivation. Now let us see a small animation which will show you all these things together. Now you can see that the line I have already brought down to the uh, line which is passing through origin. So I have already applied the translation matrix. We'll take this point and I will rotate it about the X axis by angle alpha. So you can see the trace of my rotation also. So when after you do this rotation about X axis, the line completely now lies in the XZ plane. Now to make it coincident with the Z axis, I have to again rotate it by angle beta. So you can see the line is coinciding with the Z axis. So in first is alpha angle and next is beta angle. This is how you make the line which was given to us coincident with the Z axis. So now we can take a simple question related to this. Suppose I have a line which is uh, passing through which is passing through origin and it is in the direction uh, 1 minus to 2. So by what angle should I rotate about X axis and what angle should I rotate about Y axis so that this line gets coincident with the with the Z axis. So what is what is the what are the direction ratios of my line? The direction ratios of my line are 1 minus 2 and 2. The line is passing through which point? The line is originally passing through the point 0, 0, 0. Now what angle should be alpha? Al alpha is rotation about what? Alpha was rotation about X axis and we also find want to find beta which is rotation about Y axis so that the line becomes coincident with the what? Coincident with the Z axis, right? Now, if you know the direction ratios are given by 1 minus 2 and 2, what will be the direction cosines? Direction cosines Cx, Cy and Cz are given by 1 upon the magnitude which is 1 square plus 2 square plus 2 square from this. Then the second is Cy is minus 2 upon square root of 1 square plus 2 square plus 2 square and Cz is given by 2 upon square root of 1 square plus 2 square plus 2 square which is equal to 1 upon 3 which is minus 2 upon 3 and this is 2 upon 3. So these are the values of Cx, Cy and Cz. The derivation of uh, alpha showed us that cos alpha was given by 
cz upon d and sin alpha was equal to cy upon d where d was the square root of what d was the square root of cy square and cz square so when you find the value of d you will understand the value of d is 2 root 2 upon 3 because cy and cz square are given to you and therefore this will mean that cos alpha when i use put the values of cz and d i will get 1 upon root 2 and sin alpha is also sin alpha is minus 1 upon root 2 if you calculate that you will get now this means that when i calculate tan alpha tan alpha will be sin alpha by cos alpha will become minus 1 and therefore the value of alpha will become minus 45 degrees so this means that i should rotate that line first about the x axis by what angle by angle minus 45 degrees what is beta you want to now find beta beta was the rotation about y axis so that it becomes finally coincident with the z axis again we know that what was cos beta was simply equal to d and sin beta was just simply equal to cx so what was what is cos beta in this case cos beta is d which is 2 root 2 by 3 and sin beta is just cx which is simply 1 by 3 because cx is 1 by 3 okay and therefore when i calculate tan beta it becomes easy for us the tan helps us here so it will be equal to 1 upon 2 root 2 and this equivalently means that beta will be equal to how much 19.47 degrees so it means that i should rotate the line initially by by minus 45 degrees about x axis and how much should we rotate about y axis we should rotate it about what we should rotate it about minus 19.47 degrees because while taking the rotation itself beta was taken to be what beta was taken to be negative of beta so the values of alpha alpha is minus 45 and value of beta is minus 19 with this problem this section gets over